Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Tabletop Simulator. So today we're going to be doing another game of Spirit Island. I figured I've been portraying the game maybe as being a little bit too easy, a little easier than it really is, because I've been playing against very low level adversaries. So today we're going to really go for it. First of all, dramatically upping the complexity, we're playing two spirits at the same time. We are two players. Uh, we're playing as Sharp Fangs Behind the Leaves, the beast focus spirit. I've played Sharp Fangs before, but I'm not sure if I did it on the channel or not. Uh, anyway, Sharp Fangs' whole thing is playing with the beast tokens. Whenever you, whenever beast tokens move, they can carry your presence with them, the same way that the uh, Thunder Speaker uh, can have their presence carried by the Dahan. And during each spirit phase, you can replace one of your presence discs with a beast token. The replaced presence is completely removed from the game. There are some things which can, like some major powers, which can return destroyed presence to spirits. Uh, that stuff cannot fetch uh, presence that has been turned into beasts. It's just gone forever. And our uh, our powers are very focused on using the beasts to harass and kill invaders. So we have this innate power uh, that at fast speed allows us to move beast tokens around and do damage with them. We can use this to kill explorers, to kill towns before ravaging is very important. Um, in order to do this, we are going to need two green and three red. The first disc on our energy track has a red under it, and we have two card plays. So this is available from the very first turn, as long as we can play two green, one or two green and two red. And we have red on all of our cards, so we have a lot of uh, a lot of chances to use ranging hunt. We'll we'll fire it most turns. And then frenzied assault is a little bit more of a late game power, but allows us to do uh, quite a bit more damage and also to really inflict some fear. I think a lot of the a lot of the fear that this guy inflicts though comes from destroying towns. Our other spirit is Ocean's Hungry Grasp. Something about this pairing just struck me as really cool. As the beasts, we can chase the invaders to the coast, and then the ocean could reach out and take them. And something about that is, just seems really awesome to me. So uh, Ocean's Hungry Grasp is pretty weird, and I've never played as this one before. So I'm curious to see how this will work out. So. First of all, Ocean's Hungry Grasp means the ocean is a place where we can we can play. Your presence can be in oceans, but it cannot be inland. So we, we only get to play in the ocean and on the coast with these guys. Uh, oceans on boards with any of your presence are treated as coastal wetlands for the purpose of powers and blight. Uh, and you drown any invaders or Dahan that are moved to the ocean. And when we destroy when we drown pieces, they are destroyed, and then uh, invader pieces that are drowned get placed over here. And at any time, we can exchange X health of invaders to gain one energy, where X is the number of players. So for us, it's two. So two health of invaders becomes one energy for us. Uh, our innate powers are just generate fear. It takes white, purple, blue. So all of our powers are blue. Half, of, Most of them are white, but only one of them is purple. So we wanna, we're going to want to get some purple powers from the power deck. And Ocean Breaks the Shore at slow speed... In coastal lands, we can just drown towns and even cities sometimes. So we have two uh, gray symbols. I think this is Earth. Yeah, okay. We have two Earth symbols. So we'll be on the lookout for uh, for Earth symbols on our on powers that we gain from the decks as well. Being able to just drown cities in coastal territories is really, uh, really powerful. And our powers are... Pretty obviously, uh, pretty focused on drowning people. So we can gather. Remember, anytime it says target land coastal, we can use the ocean. Oceans are considered coastal wetlands on any board that has any of our presence on it. So we can gather dudes directly into the ocean. Okay, we have a fast, uh, a fast speed defend four. I do love having a defend card around. And we can drown. Yeah, okay. These all look good. I'll no you'll notice these are all very low cost powers. We don't have any starting powers that cost more than one. But we also have very poor base energy generation. Alright, you may have noticed I've been avoiding showing the island. Here's why. This is the starting state of our island. Uh, there are two cities and three towns on each of these boards, in addition to two blight and just a huge, just a huge amount of garbage. This is gonna be a really harsh situation. So today we're playing against level six Kingdom of Sweden. I do wanna say part of the thing I wanted to do here was really ratchet up the difficulty and see what it's like to play the game in hard mode, but also, I chose Sweden by looking at all four of the adversaries and picking the one that I thought had the easiest looking level six. 
So there is difficulty above this. I just thought this was pushing it far enough, considering we're increasing complexity at the same time. So, uh, new actual new rules. Uh, when we pull the escalation cards, the invaders will uh, will attempt to replace Dahan with towns. They'll assimilate Dahan that they explore into. That could be dangerous. Uh, towns deal three damage. Cities deal five damage. And the invaders are much more effective at placing blight. Most of the rules here are just setup stuff, so a lot of the additional difficulty is already on the board. But man, it's kind of a lot, isn't it? So you can see here, this is Ocean's Hungry Grasps, home board. So all of all of our ocean presence is here. And down here is Sharp Fangs' home board. Uh, you are allowed to place one of your starting presence with Sharp Fangs anywhere on the island that there is a beast token. So I thought we could... Uh, I thought we could maybe focus on the top board, try to get it relatively under control, and then move down to the bottom. Uh, also worth noting, the fear deck in this configuration is four fear cards before level two, then four fear cards before level three, then five more fear cards. So a fear victory seems somewhat out of the question, especially considering that the fear pool has four symbols in it per player. But we also have a lot more room to work with under our blight ceiling than we're used to. So here's hoping, man. And maybe I should have said this before six and a half minutes into the video, but of course, if you don't know how the game works, in the description below, uh, there will be a link to the first video where I played the game, where I explained the rules a little more thoroughly. I will not be explaining the rules in great detail here. We had enough on our plate as it is. So, when there are multiple players, you play all the phases simultaneously. So first we're in the spirit phase, and it's time for the growth step. Uh, Sharp Fangs has an unusual growth because all of the growth options are quite small, but you get two of them every turn. I have to imagine that it's right to play Presence. We only have one, we can get at most one Presence per turn, and I think we're going to want to play this option most turns. So the first thing we want to do is add an animal symbol so that we have access to Raging Hunt. And we need to add it to a jungle or a land with beasts that is within three range of our existing Presence. Uh, also, oh yeah. Part of setup involved discarding one of the invader cards, so there are there's one fewer level one invader card than usual. And we're going to have a build in uh, we're gonna have a build in a in wetlands this turn. We definitely can just kill this guy. Right. This build will be stopped by the disease token. So we have we really gotta worry about these two. So the reason I'm saying that build can be stopped is we can we can do this, right? We can play our two red and green cards and then use Ranging Hunt to deal one damage per beast token in this territory, killing this dude before he can build. Then, at, actually, at the end of that power, you get to push beasts out of the land you targeted. So we'll push the beast here, and hopefully we'll get one of those event cards that kills that, that causes beast tokens to do damage. So I think what I'm going to do is actually... Place my presence... Well, I guess let's place it where the beast token is. We might have to move in here, because this Ravage is going to be really ugly next turn if we don't do something about it. And for our other option, uh, we also have a growth option that costs energy. So whenever we want to reclaim, we're going to have to spend energy, which is maybe not great. I'm going to choose, I think, to gain three energy. We don't need a huge amount of energy to play our cards or anything, but... Um, if we gain three energy now, next turn, maybe we can gain a major power. Like, we might be able to go into major powers really quickly if we just hit this semi-frequently. And I would like to get some big powers. I think we're going to have to come out of the gate kind of fast here to deal with the huge amount of stuff that started on the board. All right, so that's our growth for you. Growth for you. So reclaim cards, gain power card, gather presence into each ocean, and gain energy. Or add two presence and gain energy, or gain a card, add a presence, and push a presence from each ocean. Hmm. I have to imagine we want to get some of our presence up. Uh, for one thing, I know I definitely want to move this presence disc so we're at two card plays, because card plays are important. This will get us moon, that'll get us water. I think we really want to get down, like, the free symbols seem really important, given some of the hefty-ish symbol costs, uh, element costs. So why don't we do this? 
I'm gonna add presence in each ocean and it's it's add a presence in any ocean twice. So we definitely want to put a presence here. The question is, where do we want this second piece? We don't have any powers that require a sacred site, but we do have a number of powers that have zero range. And we can use the, the push thing, obviously. I'm going to put them both in this ocean, I think. So that we have the ability to push into this area and try to help deal with it. Okay, and I should say, uh, the board state's going to be pretty complex. It might be difficult for me to find the best line of play. I'm not going to agonize over it. What we're going to do here is try to identify good lines of play. Uh, more than more than spending a lot of time uh, looking for the absolute best one. So growth is done. We get our energy per turn. Oh, sorry, I get one energy for that growth option that we picked. All right, energy per turn for you is zero. For sharp fangs is one. And then card playing. So I'm pretty sure I want to do ranging hunt. If I want to do ranging hunt, I have to play both of my green cards. We do have the option of playing Prey on the Builders instead, which will allow us to gather a beast token, and then if the target land has a beast token, invaders don't build. This will prevent a build, but using Ranging Hunt, we can prevent a build and also kill a guy, get an invader off the table so we don't have to worry about him later. So I think we want to play these cards. These are both slow. Generate Fear, we'll destroy some stuff, we'll move some beasts around, but I don't want to spend too much time planning what we're going to do with them right now, because they're slow and the board's going to be pretty different by the time we actually get to execute them. So these are the cards we're playing. I'll pay the one energy. And then over here... Okay, we can deal with this build via Ocean Breaks the Shore, right? Drown a town. Uh, we could also swallow the land dwellers. This is a slow card. This is actually better because it'll kill the explorer too. So maybe we don't necessarily need to push for Ocean Breaks the Shore. Although if we play Swallow the Land Dwellers, we will get it. Um, because all of our cards are blue, right? So if we play this, we have the one gray and then we will have two blue. Pound Ships to Splinters requires us to play Call of the Deeps. Actually, Call of the Deeps does a good job of dealing with it too, right? Because we have to target a coastal territory, we get to gather an explorer, and this is considered to be a coastal territory. And actually, if the target land is the ocean, you can gather another explorer. We could target this land and gather both of these explorers. And then when we use, um, when we use Ranging Hunt, oh no... I was going to say, when we use Ranging Hunt, we could target this land, pull the beast over here, murder a dude. But you actually can't target Ranging Hunt in a land that has Blight. Well, crap. <laughs> that makes Ranging Hunt a lot less good. <laughs> Which means that we don't, we don't really need the Ranging Hunt then. So maybe I do this differently? Hold on. Because if the Ocean Spirit has this under control, we can play... we can play you differently. So if we don't have to play these, we probably want to play neither of them then, right? So that we can do Range and Hunt next turn easily. So why don't we do the other two? Prey on the Builders doesn't seem great for us. We can gather a beast into a place where we have a disc. And then invaders can't build there this turn. Like, it doesn't... This doesn't really do anything. This doesn't do anything no matter what we do. Um, I mean, we could use... We could still play the other way and use Ranging Hunt to just kill another guy somewhere. Why We could range over here and kill this dude. Even though we don't really need to. Just to get kills. Or we could still do Ranging Hunt, because um, we're allowed to push from the target area. So we could still do Ranging Hunt, just target it here and push. And that way, um, we still have a chance of pulling an event card that causes our beast token to kill this dude. Yeah, let's not change the plan. Let's do let's Let's still do this thing. It's a little bit less necessary now. But it's still better than our other option, I think. 
So we're definitely playing Call of the Deeps. And then maybe we should just also play Grasping Tide. Oh, we can... Uh, so we can save... Well, we actually only need one gray symbol to trigger this. And actually, we don't want to play Grasping Tide until there's a Ravage. We don't need Swallow the Land Dwellers right now. Target Spirit gains two energy and may push a town and up to two Dahan from one of their lands. If Dahan are pushed to your ocean, you may move them to any coastal land instead of drowning them. That's interesting. Let's go ahead and play this. Because I think we want to save both these, both these cards for later when things are a little bit more dire. Yeah. Okay. So we must pay an energy. And that's our spirit phase. So now we go to fast powers. Uh, we have ranging hunt and call of the deeps. So let's do call of the deeps first. I am going to target this ocean. We're going to gather an explorer. And then because target land was the ocean, we will gather an additional explorer. Both of these dudes drown and we'll place them down here in the I drowned box. So that we can harvest them later for energy. This is a pretty good card. Uh, and then we get pound ships to splinters, right? Because we're on white, purple. We're on white, white. White. Purple, blue, blue. Ah, uh, we need another blue. Okay, well we get a fear. Very, very slow march to our fear cards. And then we have uh, we have ranging hunt. So we could target this land and kill this guy. And maybe that's worth doing just to lower the number. We won't be able to stop the build, but we can lower the amount of health that's in this territory in the hopes of... Um, oh, there isn't, there isn't going to be a build. We could lower the amount of health in this territory, though, in the hopes of being able to destroy the city next turn... In order to get this to be drown a city, we would have had to ke we would have had to have kept tidal boon, and we can't reclaim and also push presence, which we would need to do to have a chance of drowning the city. That city might just uh, do horrible, horrible damage, but maybe it's still right to go over there. We don't have a way of dealing with the city right now. That's actually really bad. We need some Dahan over here. Well, we have some Dahan over here. You know, I think this is where I'm going to target it. So we will, uh, yeah, one within one in a place where there's no blight. We will gather a beast token. The beast token will do one damage. And then we can push him, but I won't. And I think he doesn't carry our presence with him. I guess these both require our presence to be in other places. But you know what? I might want my presence over here. If we get a mountain explorer, prey on the builders could be useful next turn. I think I'm going to leave my presence where it is. He's not going to carry it with him. And that is our fast phase. So now this board is terrifying. Let's go to the invader phase. So first is an event. A strange madness among the beasts. Uh-oh. They grow wilder and even more savage. You may let them rampage unto death... Each beast destroys a Dahan and then remove a beast from each board. How bad is that? Um, Oh, remove a beast from each board actually really sucks. That would leave us with only one beast token. Or, at a cost of three energy per beast, aided by red. Remove any number... Oh, sorry. It cost of three energy per beast that we keep. Remove any beast tokens that you want, and then each spirit may push one beast to an adjacent land. So when it's stuff like this, when there's there's a cost to be played, you can distribute the cost amongst your spirits any way you want, I believe. So... Oh, and then we're going to have a Savage Frenzy where each beast destroys an explorer and then deals two damage. That's actually awesome. Unfortunately, man, if I had known that was going to come up, we could have dealt our one damage here to the city. Yeah, unfortunately, we have no way of uh, no way of really taking advantage of that uh, with this beast token. But this guy can definitely get pushed to here and kill this dude, and this guy gets to eat a town. So I do want to do guide the madness. 
This is aided by red, so we can discard red cards to lower the cost by two each. And we have three total energy available to us. It would be nine energy to save all of our beasts, which we cannot do. I think we have to lose this one. Right, because I could discard both of my beast cards and then pay two energy. That would allow us to keep two beasts live. And these ones both get to do cool stuff. I think that's what we do. So I will pay two energy, discard both of my cards. Um, I don't really have a good place to put a discard pile. I wasn't really thinking about this when I was laying out how I'm holding the cards. Okay, that's my discard pile. I could have forgotten a power to... Uh, you can forget a power of the aided type to lower the cost by four, but I don't think I want to forget any of my initial powers right now. Okay, so Sharp Fangs Behind the Leaves pays the full cost. Then we remove this beast token, which is a sad time. We can make more, though. And then each spirit may push one beast to an adjacent land. So I will choose to... Orange will push this beast to an adjacent land. And it will carry the presence? Or... No, actually, I don't think it does. Yeah. Okay, then Savage Frenzy. Each beast destroys an explorer and does two damage. This guy destroys an explorer. This guy does two damage, and that generates a fear because we killed a town. And then, on each board, push two to Han from a land with tokens to a land without tokens. Uh, okay, in both cases, this is the... Uh, that sucks. I want the Dahan here. Well, I'm going to push him to here on this board, and on this board push him to here, I guess? I don't know, maybe pushing him to a city is a bad idea. Let's push him to here, I guess. Yeah. A weird, uh, a weird card. A weird event. And now, invader time. So there's no Ravage on the first turn, then they do a build in Wetlands. We actually managed to prevent most of the building. And then, they explore sand. Unfortunately, buildings everywhere, they still have, ex they still have access to all of the sands. Alright. This is going to get... Pretty ugly next turn. We're going to have to do some real damage control here. And then we are slow fades. So the first thing I want to do is I want to use Ocean Breaks the Shore. Targeting a coastal land at zero range. Oh, that's right. This ended up being dealt with. So never mind. We don't use Ocean Breaks the Shore. It doesn't do anything. Or, hold on. We could Tidal Boon first. So target spirit gains two energy and may push a town and up to two to Han from one of their lands. Can we push a town? Nope, can't push a town into a relevant place. It would have been good to uh, play this a little bit more carefully so that we could have, but... Oh, if I'd had my beast carry my presence over to here... Oh, what am I thinking? A build didn't happen here. There was a disease token. So actually, there was not going to be a town here in any case. So I could give two energy to Sharp Fangs. He could push a town. He could push this town. But that's the only place where we can do that. I don't think I want to push the town. So we just basically, this is target somebody and give them two energy. If I target myself, I can push two to Han from one of my lands into the ocean. And then I can move them to any coastal land instead of drowning them. So I could push them to here. Yeah, okay. So Tidal Boon targeting Ocean's Hungry Grasp. Target Spirit gains two energy. And then pushes up to two to Han from one of their lands. If Dahan are pushed to your ocean, you may move them to any coastal land. It says any coastal land, not any land adjacent to that ocean. So we'll just use the power of the water to sweep them around to here, where they can fight the city. Because this coming turn, we have access to defend four, 
and then they'll just kill the city in response. I think that's pretty good. And then um, we have both of these slow powers. So first of all, targeted land without blight. Range one from a jungle where we have presence. A fear and a beast token. Or if target land already has both fear, uh, both beast token and invaders, three fear. I'm pretty sure we want to add a beast token. Probably to like here. It's from a jungle where I have presence. So actually, this is the only the only place that we can aim from. So it has to be one of these three. And it actually can't be that one because it has to be a place where we don't have a blight. Yeah, let's put a beast token down right here. We'll just kill this guy. We'll see this guy dead before he gets to build. And we get a fear. We're getting there very slowly on the fear. And then this. Uh, one... Oh, I guess I'm going to put this here instead. Because uh, <laughs> this guy's dead. He has come too near the jungle. A fear, destroy an explorer. Take that. All right, we're getting there. We're almost... Ha we're halfway to a fear card. Look at that. And that is all of our relevant powers. Yep. Okay. So everything into the discard piles. Just sort of out to the side here. And that's... <laughs> it only took 25 minutes to get through the first turn. Uh, things are going to start getting really bad really quick here. We're going to have a, a level 2 card this turn, so we're going to get some escalation, and I'm very worried. All right, well, new spirit phase. So first of all, we have to do this. So growth, pay this, get back all of our cards. And obviously we have to do that because we don't have any cards to play otherwise. The good news is this means we can ranging hunt again. The bad news is we probably cannot afford to get a major power with this gain power card. So let's just grab us a new miner. In particular, we're looking for reds and greens, but... Orange and white are both also relevant. Cards that are both red and green would be best. We did not draw any. Uh, so, Call to Bloodshed. Slow, range one, a land with Dahan. One damage to, per Dahan or gather up to three. This could be actually really useful. Gnawing Root Biters, which are some kind of like, terrifying, insane rat. Allows us to push up to two towns. That's not terrible. Devouring ants within one range of a sacred site. A damage, destroy a Dahan, a fear, and if the land is a jungle or a sands, one extra damage. This is actually pretty interesting to me. Sources of damage are important. We got a lot of invaders to kill. That said, a fast card that allows us to gather stuff is also pretty valuable. It can't be cast where there's Blight. But gathering things, especially Dahan, at fast speeds so that they can fight invaders during the Ravage is probably valuable enough to be something we should be thinking about. And it does have a green symbol. We kind of need to get three card plays so that we can activate this without having to have all of the cards be red. But I kind of think I might take this. Yeah, I'm going to take this. Okay, so that was one growth option. Pay one, reclaim your cards, get a new card. And then, I mean, I'm going to get one energy this turn. I would really like to place a presence, I think. I just want to get... I want to get deeper into both of these lines. Placing a presence now so that we have an extra green symbol could be pretty good. It'd make it really, really easy to activate Ranging Hunt. We also need to get more card plays, especially since I have two free cards. I'm going to take it from here for now. I think we want to get to three plays quickly. So, into a jungle or a land with beasts within three range of existing presence. I think 
we need to we need to be present in more jungles because a lot of our powers target from jungles and this is the place that is most surrounded by enemies remember this city is going away this turn so yeah okay and then growth for you you have enough cards to do all your plays i think what i want to do is this option we want to be able to reach out and drown people so that would allow us to push our presence from here out to here. Grasping Tide has one range, so we don't strictly have to do that right now, but we'll want presence out. So let's do this. Um, so first, we gain, a power, we gain a power card, we add a presence to a coastal land, and we push a presence from each ocean. Uh, and remember that the ocean itself is considered to be a coastal land, so I'm going to add... Yeah, I'm going to add a presence to this coastal land. And then I'm going to push a presence from each ocean. Yeah, that seems good. And we get a card. A uh, minor, probably, because I don't really have a lot of power right now. Or energy, rather. So a purple is useful. Unfortunately, neither of the purples that we drew have uh, blue on them. What do we really need? With our two plays, we'll hit three blue this turn. But there's no way we get... Yeah, we... There's no way we get to the second level of Pound Ships to Splinters. If I take a purple card right now, though, I could get one level of it. We can keep that fear ticking. Uh, if the card I take has both blue and gray on it... We could potentially drown a city... And we do have a place where that's relevant. So what's blue and gray? Encompassing ward. Defend two in every land where target spirit has... Wow, that seems very good. Because it's so easy to move Sharp Fangs' presence around. Encompassing ward might be, might be the go. Defend one, or defend four if it's Jungle of Sands. This is a great card, but I don't know that it fits our current needs. Range two of a Sacred Sight. Push guys and add Wilds tokens. I do like a Wilds token. Invaders do not build in target land this turn. This is another Sacred Sight thing. One fear per building, or one fear per Dahan, whichever is less. So it only generates a lot of fear in places that have a lot of people. Or push three. I think it's Encompassing Ward. I think it has to be. The symbols are really, really good for us, and it's actually a very powerful card to cast on our partner. I think this game... There's something about this this aesthetic. The thematics here are very pleasing to me. This is super cool. Okay, so we've processed all of our growth. We get our energy per turn, which is one total between the two of us. And then here, I think we really do want to play both of our blue and gray cards. Because I think we, we want to be able to kill that city in the jungle. And also, these are just good cards. Encompassing Ward's not super relevant here because we've already got this defended. Oh, that's right. No, we can't do that this turn. We need to we need to play Grasping Tide. It's too important. We could just hold these. You don't actually have to play two cards when you have the ability to. So this would be a pretty soft turn from Ocean's Hungry Grasp. But it will make a good next turn. And then we'll have to play Reclaim the turn after that, probably. But that'll be fine. I might I might only play one card this turn. I don't know. Let's uh, let's place this here. Just remember this is spoken for, and we'll uh, we'll figure out this guy's plays. Then we'll we'll see what we need to do with the other one. So we could once again run Ranging Hunt. Right, we could uh, we could play Too Near the Jungle, Teeth Gleam from the Darkness, get a Ranging Hunt off. We're going to see builds in the desert, none of which are preventable. But we could prevent builds with Prey on the Builders instead. <clears throat> My understanding of this card, right, is that you process it in order, so you can gather a beast, and then if you gathered a beast, the target land has beasts, and as such, invaders do not build there this turn. 
It's alright, we could just do it here, or here, or something. Well, it would have to be here, because it's only one range, right? It is, in fact, zero range. Well, that's not great. But. I was going to say, but if we uh, if we did get ranging hunt off, we could use it to gather beasts to one of our tokens. Like, gather this target here, gather this beast here, have him do no meaningful damage, then push him, carrying our token into one of these spaces, then do prey on the builders at range zero. But we can't prey on the builders and also ranging hunt until we have either a third card play or an extra plant symbol available to us. So, ranging hunt, or prey on the builders does nothing. None of my discs are in the right place. We can at least put ourselves in position to do some damage. If we do the, uh, if we do the ranging hunt thing. And also we get to just kill dudes, which I always like. We generate fear. It's a lot of good stuff. There's a lot of things to like about this sequence. So I don't, I don't think it is to our benefit to play a second card with blue this turn. Or with, uh, with black, rather. I guess I could have made this guy, this guy's presence blue and this guy's red to match their stuff more, uh, more closely. That might have been a good idea. I really like orange and black, though. Alright, well that's our spirit face. I'm fine with those plays. Let's commit to it. So, fast powers. First of all, this thing. Uh, we're going to put this right here so that I don't forget. We have a defend four. And also that causes two fear. We're getting there. We'll actually get a fear card at the end of this turn. Or maybe even before then. Uh, yeah, that's all that he has. We don't have this. We don't have a purple symbol. And for you, ranging hunt. So we want to target a place where... There is some violence to be done. I mean, we just target one of these deserts, right? We kill one guy. It, it has to be this one, because this is the only place where we can gather a beast to. And then we do one damage per beast, kill this dude, and we prepare. Now, we can, we can push the beast. Maybe I should push that beast to come and grab this. I don't think there's a card that will cause a beast to do enough damage to kill a city. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to push the beast token to here so that he can grab this presence and start moving it around in the future. Well, we sure did kill a guy. Alright. Invader phase. Rising interest in the island. Oh, man. I was hoping for, for an event that wasn't going to cost us a huge amount of energy. Your island is unlike any the invaders have seen. Their leaders begin to take interest in tales of strangeness. You may ignore the curiosity, return the top card of the invader deck to the box, uh-oh, and on each board add a town, or weave lies in the minds of their observers. Costs four energy per player aided by purple, so we actually can't do that. No, we could. We could. Each of our spirits knows a purple power, so we could forget both of our purple powers to past this. Return the top fear card to the box. During the next normal ravage, each town and city does plus one damage. That's actually quite bad, because here, due to the uh, fine steel for tools and guns, towns deal three damage and cities deal five. This city is going to deal five damage. We're defending four of it right now. So the city will deal one damage, which will not be meaningful. If we let cities and towns do plus one damage, uh, it will kill one of the Dahan and it will blight the land. And then the Dahan will not have enough damage in retaliation to kill it. So I think we have to... Man, as much as I hate this, I think we have to ignore the curiosity. We can't let this city take this area over. We could kill it next turn, but it'll blight the land, it'll... Cost us a presence. It'll kill one of the Dahan. Man, I'm not sure. I was kind of relying on this working out. Defend four is a bad number. 
And I mean, if I do it, if I just accept it, I also don't have to lose both of my purple powers, which is, I think, valuable. I think we're going to ignore the curiosity. So, as much as I hate this... Oh no, it's we're losing one of the one of the tier 2 cards at least. I was thinking we were losing our last tier 1, but that's right. There was one fewer tier 1 than normal. Okay. And then on each board add a town to a land that doesn't have one. So, on this board, we don't want to add it to a wetland. Um ugh. This actually really sucks. Here, I guess we could add it here. Honestly, that's not even that bad. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and add it here, right? Because it's a town without a town, not a town without buildings, or a land without a town, not a land without buildings. And then here, I don't even coastal, right? Just keep it coastal so that we can do stuff to it. Okay, then add a beast token to a jungle without blight on each board, and we get a fear if any invaders are present. So, a jungle without blight. Right, so here, it's there, and we get a we get a fear from that. And then on this board, I'll put it here so that we get another fear, because doing that means that we get a fear card right now, because we're about to hit the fear card phase. And then on each board, add wilds to a land with Dahan. So the wilds tokens prevent exploration. What would be a place I don't really want people exploring into? Here, I guess? And over here... There's no place that we can actually keep them out of. I don't know. It doesn't really matter, I guess. It doesn't matter as much on that board, certainly. Okay, so now we do the fear phase. Each player adds a strife in a land with... Disease or Dahan or a beast. So remember, we are two different players. I'm going to add a strife. I'm going to add strife to these desert cities. No, I can't. Those are not. This one, I can add a strife to this desert town because that's something we're going to have to cope with uh, during the next Ravage phase. And then also. What's another place that has a Dahan or... We could strife one of these things, because beast tokens work too. Let's strife this one, just because I don't want... Any, any way we can prevent damage in a place with that already has Blight. Seems okay. Yeah, that's fine. That was an alright fear card. And the fear pool is cleared... And then we start processing actual invader time. So first of all, Wetland Ravage. Here, the the city does one damage over top of our defend, and then the Han fight back, dealing four damage, killing the city, and generating two more fear. Uh, and that's the only Ravage. Then they build in a lot of places. So build town, build town, and build city. This is bad. This is really bad. And then, after invaders explore into each land this phase, if that land has at least as many invaders as Dahan, replace one Dahan village with a town. Okay. Explore. Explore, and there are as many invaders as Dahan here. Yeah. Uh, this is, this is bad. <laughs> And they explore here, and they explore here. At least it only got one of uh, one group. Ah, oh, boy. Well, like I said, I do expect to lose this, but I think we're doing all right, actually. So now, slow powers. So first things first. Uh, we don't have Frenzy's Assault. We have this. Two near the jungle. So there's going to be a jungle build. We can kill him, right? Yep, that is within range. So we do a fear and kill this explorer. He is too near the jungle on account of being in the middle of the jungle. 
And then we have this. So in a land that is not blighted, within one range of our thing, add a beast. And we could do some serious damage here. I'm going to do it here. So we could do a fear and add a beast, or we could just gain three fear there. I will definitely choose to add a beast and also a fear. Or maybe I should do it here, and then gather beasts with... No, I can't play my reclaim. Never mind. I was going to say we could reclaim, do this, ranging hunt, and do some serious damage over here, but we're not going to have the symbols. Yeah, that's a shame. Once we have plant... and a third play, this hand would be good enough, but we're not there. We could actually still potentially get it if next turn we do gain a power card, gain an energy as one of our growths, and we find a power card that is both red and green, and also cheap. So I guess let's plan for that. Also, sometimes events have beast tokens just go nuts and kill everybody, which is cool. So we'll place a beast token, we'll take a fear. And that's all of our slow powers, right? Yeah, we didn't activate that. Alright, discards, and we're moving to the next turn. I don't know. I don't know how much longer we're going to be able to survive. Let me take this back. Okay, growth. So I guess you can pick two and they go in any order. So we could actually reclaim. Right, we could do like three energy, reclaim, and then we'd have the energy necessary to uh, make this happen. We could gather a beast token to here. Do one damage per beast token, killing the town. And then they will still deal six damage with their ravage, which is real bad. But, I mean, there's something to be said for trying to mitigate the damage, at least. If we weren't going to do that, this turn is jungle build. We could certainly prey on the builders. Like here. A build won't happen here because of the disease. A build will happen here and it will suck. But, we can at least start working on this. I am not sure. I am not sure what the right thing to do is. I think I am going to... Cause right, because we would have to take plus three energy because I need one energy left over. Oh no, we'll get one energy. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to take gain power card plus one energy as my... First growth option. We're going to gain another miner. I like to see cheap cards. I like to see cheap cards that have my symbols on them. Gift of Constancy is target spirit gains two energy. At end of turn, return a target spirit may reclaim a power card instead of discarding it. If you target another spirit, you may also reclaim one card. This is a lot better in a two spirit game. That's for sure. Gift of Power is just target spirit, gains a minor power. We just gain a ton of cards all the time. But actually, Call to Tend, allowing us to manage our Blight and our Dahan a little bit, while also being cheap and green and red, is pretty compelling. Although, I guess actually what we really need is cards that are like orange and red. Call to Migrate really lets us move the Dahan around. Because the green thing is going to be a lot more under control soon. Hmm. Yeah, maybe we want to take this. But I do want to have a lot of options for activating Ranging Hunt too, And we don't have any way to deal with Blight right now. I'm going to take Call to Tent. It's a good idea. 
Stupid hand zones. I think I can turn those off. I think I may have. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think having a way of dealing with Blight is probably a good idea. And we gain a power. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna, or an energy, rather. And then I'm going to go ahead and do this. And we'll reclaim... Yeah, we'll reclaim our cards. And we'll gain another power card. And I think... Maybe this is a time when I want to gain a major. I know I can't afford to play a major, but like we have a lot of cards. And now that we have this, I'm wondering if it's okay for us to lose Enticing Splendor. We have another way of moving to Han around. And it's a little easier because it doesn't require us to, it doesn't do zero range. I'm going to do that. Paid one er, paid one energy, reclaimed cards. I'm gonna gain a major. It's good to have something to work toward. Seven. Seven is maybe a little high for the cost of our major. Here's a red and an orange. A red and an orange that has invaders on it shooting at each other, so that's good. So within one range of a sacred site at fast speed, add a, add a strife, and then each invader with strife deals damage to other invaders in target land. And if you get to four yellow, that's not going to happen. But instead, if invaders ravage target land, they damage invaders in adjacent lands instead of Dahan in the land... This card is bananas! Uh, we'll never get this. This is still pretty good, though, I think. Uh, let's see here. Fire and Flood. Four damage in each target land. Targets two lands within a certain range of your uh, secret sites. I, we're not. That's not happening. We're not going to get to seven, and we're not going to get sacred sites all that much. I think this is a lot of damage, though. I don't know. Mists of Oblivion, a damage to each invader in target land, a fear per building destroyed by this power to a maximum of four. That's pretty cool. Uh, the land thrashes in furious pain. Two damage per blight, plus one damage per blight in adjacent lands. And then you can repeat it. I think we gotta take instruments of their own ruin. This is not a thing we're gonna be able to cast soon, and we will never be able to use the bottom half, but... It's pretty cool. And we have to forget a power when we learn it. And I'm going to forget Enticing Splendor, Emma? Maybe Terrifying Chase. Terrifying Chase is useful. We've just not really found an opportunity for it. Honestly, maybe this four yellow thing isn't that far out of reach. What if I forgot something else? What if I kept the two yellow cards? Because this has an orange and a red on it. Right, so if we played this and Enticing Splendor and Terrifying Chase, well, we have to get up to four card plays. Which is very far away. No, I'm not going to worry about it. We're just, we're just never going to have that effect. So I will forget Enticing Splendor, I think. Yeah, we're just never, we're never going to get that. It's fine. The top half of this card is totally worth playing. Okay, then you guys uh, are going to probably play this. We definitely want to Ocean Breaks the Shore this turn, right? They're going to build here. It's going to be a town. We're going to play Ocean Breaks the Shore to drown their city. And also shallow or also swallow the land dwellers to eat the explorer and one of the two. Oh no, they won't build a town. We can clear this place if we play Swallow the Land Dwellers this turn. So... We don't have to play Encompassing Wind or Encompassing Ward. We only really need one play. I don't know, maybe this is a good reclaim turn. Gather one presence into each ocean. These are... Gathers are always optional, I think, but hold on, I have the rulebook. I'm pretty sure gathers are always optional. If the gather's not optional, that actually makes that kind of an awkward thing to play. Alright. Some powers tell you to gather things into the target land. This means move that many things into the target land from lands adjacent to it. Others tell you to push things. Pushing multiple. It actually does not say that these are optional. Okay. I'm going to assume they're not, then. 
So, gather a presence into each ocean is not... Oh, it's not a big deal, actually. We can just gather this presence. Yeah, no, that's totally fine. So we'll reclaim cards. Steal them back out into my crude hand zones over here. Uh, then gain a power card, gather one presence into each ocean, and gain two energy. So we will gather one presence into each ocean. And actually, I think it's beneficial. I think even if it was optional, it's not uh, not something I'd want to ignore. Because this lets us redistribute them with a push later. And we get to gain a power card. And for this guy, it probably is a minor. We could drop Encompassing Ward, I guess it wouldn't be the end of the world, but it fits what we want to do so well. I think I'm going to gain a minor. There's a lot of small-scale administration that goes on when you're playing two spirits at the same time. I apologize if that's not super fascinating to watch, because it's... I get it. Okay, Destroying Towns. If you have three gray symbols, this has blue and purple on it. This is a great card for us. Like We'll get to trigger this all the time, so we can steam vents to destroy towns that are adjacent to the shore... Uh, two damage and push an explorer from a place within one range of a sacred site. That could also be very good for us. It's kind of hard to turn down a card that has a purple and a gray on it, though. I think we're taking steam vents. I think we gotta. And it's actually good. You might say that we have so many ways of dealing with coastal towns that the bottom effect of that is maybe not even useful. But I think uh, I think we'll still be able to make some cool stuff out of it. So, we have two plays. I'm pretty sure we want to play Swallow the Land Dwellers. Oh, sorry, hold on. Growth phase is complete. Energy per turn. Now we play cards. So I'm pretty sure we want to play Swallow the Land Dwellers because that one land is going to be totally full of garbage. And then with our other play, we either want to set up or we could we could gather some dudes into the ocean, but I don't think that's terribly useful. We just do steam vents. It won't be relevant, but it does give us a purple. If we played Call of the Deeps, we're actually on... Two white, one purple, three blue. Right, white, white, purple, blue, blue, blue. So playing Call of the Deeps, even though it doesn't have a huge effect right now, might still be worth it just to generate the extra fear. I'm basically playing a card that says one fear on it. Would I play that card usually? Probably not. And we do get to gather, like, we at least get to pull this explorer into the ocean. We don't have to pull this one into the ocean. He's dealt with. You know what? I think it's worth it. We can do a little bit of... Kill a guy, generate a fear is actually a fine card for zero. And actually that makes our full turn of plays zero. Now, over here, we have a little bit of a situation. So there is a desert ravage happening. And in most places, we can't do anything meaningful to stop it, right? This is very tough. And you know, he has Grasping Tide available. Screw Call the Deeps. Let's do Grasping Tide. We can defend four in a place within one of our... Oh, it still has to be coastal, though. Everything must be coastal. Never mind. It is, uh, it's tough. It's tough to be us. Defend two in every land where target spirit has presence. We can move a little bit of presence around. Right, we can target this with, if we do ranging hunt, we can target this with a ranging hunt, pull our presence over. Process encompassing ward, get. Yeah. Oh, I guess I was planning on drowning a city, wasn't I? So we actually have to play a second card that has um, gray on it. What was I thinking? 
So I don't want to do this one. I want to save this one for a time when it destroying an extra town would be relevant. We could just play Tidal Boon. Tidal Boon is a good way to uh, reshape the board a little bit after the Explorers come out. Or we could play Encompassing Ward, but I don't think Encompassing Ward's going to be good enough, right? This is the only place I can get Presence. And Defend 2 means uh, this is 9 damage. Defend 2 means 7 damage instead of 9. Or sorry, I guess this will be dead. So this will be 4 damage. Actually, that is relevant, isn't it? Because if the invaders do at least 6 damage to the land during Ravage, they add extra Blight. Yeah, that could actually be relevant. Okay. Let's make this our play. So we do have to spend one. And we do have to trigger Ranging Hunt this turn. That's fine. We planned. We were going to do that. We planned for that. We're so close. So close to getting more stuff. I just keep I keep putting myself into a position where I'm sure I have to play Ranging Hunt. This is the turn where we're going to lose control of a lot of the table, though. So uh, this might be close to the end, honestly. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think these are right. So, fast phase. Uh, we want to process this first. So, we're going to target this land, which is unblighted and within one range of our presence. We may gather one beast. We will gather one beast, and he will pull our presence disc with him. And then we will do one damage per beast, enough to kill this town off, which generates a fear. And then we may push up to two beasts. Yeah. Powers that want you to have an option always say may in them. That's right. So yeah, we're, uh, we're not pushing beasts. We're cool. We're good. Then that's our only fast power. Then we, then we process encompassing ward. Defend two in every land where target spirit has presence. It's enough to matter. If we get lucky and we draw a good, a good beast do damage card, it might have a really big effect. We're also definitely going to get blighted the hell out on this turn. Alright, so now it's an event. Okay, we are in stage two. So, local diaspora. In the single land with the most invaders, push one explorer or town to each adjacent land. The most invaders. I see threes, 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 threes. This is actually fantastic. No, it's not enough to matter. I was going to say, it's going to let us push a bunch of stuff out of this territory, but we uh, we only push explorers and towns, and the city will do enough damage here to kill, first of all, both of the Dahan, and secondly, the land. But, the invaders won't do six damage here anymore. So that's, that's the land we want to choose. Push one... Explorer or town to each adjacent land. Uh, it's really easy for us to deal with explorers that are in jungles. I'll push this town out to a coastal territory and it takes its strife with it. Uh, the city will still deal enough damage to blight and kill both of the Dahan, but it won't, it won't deal six damage anymore. So we're actually, we're getting some of this stuff under control. Then each beast generates a fear if invaders are present or and moves to an adjacent land if not. So, uh, five, six fear is generated. <laughs> yeah, we have six beast tokens on the board and all of them are with invaders. So, uh, <laughs> six fear is generated. Hold on a second. Oh, I, okay. So three fear goes into the pool, it flushes, and then three more fear goes into the pool. So we end up with three fear. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought there were eight. But yeah, there are. I just... Had them stacked strangely. And then on each board, push two to Han from a land with Blight to a land without Blight. Okay. Uh, there are no Dahan co-located with Blight on this board. Here there are. So these guys get pushed to a land without Blight. This is six damage reduced by two. So if I move these Dahan here, they both die. If I move these Dahan here... They'll kill the city. The city will will deal five damage, killing two to Han, wounding one, and then these guys will fight back and kill the city. So actually, 
to our benefit. They have forsaken this barren land. Why live here when we can live over there, in that desert? Then we got a fear card. In each land, defend one per Dahan. Oh my. That's actually great. <laughs> so now the city will only deal one damage. Ah, oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Dahan, you guys are great. Okay. So that is all of that stuff. So now we ravage. So first here, city does five damage. Nobody dies. The Dahan immediately kill it in response, generating an additional two fear. Then bad stuff happens in a lot of places. So right here, uh, eight damage is dealt. Right? Yeah, five and three. Uh, so two blight are placed, but the additional blight does not destroy presence or cause a cascade. So two blight are placed. Not good. Then here, six damage is dealt, reduced by two to four. So a blight is placed. But not enough damage to trigger anything. Oh wait, but when Ravaging adds at least one blight to a land, also add a town to an adjacent land that does not have buildings. Man. Okay, so here it would be one of these places. Let's put it on the coast. And here I will also put it on a coastal wetland. Or do I want to put it here? I'll put it here. We already have a presence here. Like, it's easy for us to deal with stuff that's in this spot. Okay. And then we have jungle build. So here we get a city, sadly. Here nothing happens because of the disease. Here we get a city. Here we get a town. And then uh, explore to wetlands is unfortunately all of the wetlands. Also, this triggers swayed by the invaders, replacing one of the Dahan with a town. Uh, and yeah, we explore to here as well. Pretty bad. We've not lost total control yet, but it's pretty. That's a lot of stuff on the table. We're still two fear cards off of moving up to the next terror level. Uh, all right. We do have a lot of slow powers to fire. So first things first. Ocean breaks the shore. So we can we can drown a city in a place where Ocean Guy has presence. City is drowned. Uh, drowning is destruction, so we do get two fear. Uh, then... In a place where we have presence, drown a town and an and an explorer. So we'll do that here. We should definitely get a uh, what do you call it? Actually, do I want to do that there? I think. Oh, it has to be a place where I have presence. This is the only coastal place where I have presence. Never mind. So we get a fear for that, which is a card, isn't it? Yes, it is. Okay, if we can just generate eight more fear, we'll finally be at Terra level two. Then we also have your stuff. So a fear and destroy an explorer someplace adjacent to a jungle. Here, right? We want to stop builds. This one's coastal, so it's a little easier to target with our other dudes. Yeah, this will stop a build, and it produces a fear. And we have this. I think we want to keep adding beast tokens. We seem to be doing very well by adding beast tokens. So we're going to have jungle ravages and wetland builds. I'm trying to figure out where's the best place to add a beast token so that we will be able to kill things. Well, this is fast speed. So a steam vents next turn will allow us to destroy this town before the ravage. So that one's under control. Uh, if we add a beast token here, I'm really reliant on ranging hunt. 
But I'm saying if we add a beast token there and then we gather a beast to there. I can just pull this. Uh, we target this with Ranging Hunt, we gather a beast to here, we can kill the town before it ravages, thus reducing that ravage to nothing. Alternatively, if we just play instruments of their own ruin, we'll have to we'll have to add a presence here so that we have a sacred site. But if we do instruments of their own ruin, add a strife to the city, and then each invader with strife deals damage to other invaders in the target land, we can we can kill the town there and the explorer. And then the city will have a strife token on it, so it won't deal damage to the land. So it will prevent this this place from blighting over. Okay, so I think our, our plan for this coming turn has to be instruments of their own ruin. Which means that... Shoot, no, we can't do that. Oh, no, we can. That's right, I have one natural income. So our, our growth phase will have to be this and this. Okay. So, just, I'm still trying to figure out where to process this, but I'm looking ahead, you know. So we know we can't do ranging hunt here, so I don't need to put, put the beast token in a place where that's relevant. But it's probably right to put it over here somewhere, right? Because we just need more beast tokens. Well, we need more beast tokens everywhere. A fear and a beast token in a land that is not blighted, that is adjacent to a jungle we control. I'm just going to put it here. Maybe we'll draw one of those cards where the beast tokens go nuts and really, really mess up the invaders. Okay, so two fear. Alright, that's the end of the turn. The game is definitely progressing pretty slowly, and I apologize for that. I'm trying to uh, not make a total fool of myself here. So, growth phase. We already know for you it has to be three energy and place presence here. The only real question is, um, do we want plant presence or play a third card presence? We can't take advantage of third card presence this turn. We also can't take advantage of plant presence this turn. Third card is probably more important. In general. Yeah. I think that's sensible. And then over here, I have no idea what I want to do. We have access to an infinite amount of energy, right? Uh, two health worth of invaders is... We have two, three, four energy banked up here. In fact, we can even represent it that way. So this is two health, this is two health, this is four health. There's not really a clean way to do that, but... So, we have four energy banked. We could just go get a major power. I could drop something. I don't know what. I do know I want to play Steam Vents. If we played this growth option, we could end up at three card plays. But actually, maybe... Are we ravaging? We're building in water. I probably want to do the push presence from each ocean thing, don't I? Because I want to get presence into this wetland. And actually, I want to get presence into the, this wetland as well. That feels, that feels like it's probably right. So, I will add a presence to a coastal land, and I will also push a presence from each ocean. And I think... Do I want to get closer... To this, or do I want to make it so that I'm actually getting power income? I probably want to make it so I'm actually getting power income. So this goes into a coastal land. We're also pushing a presence from each ocean. So I want to do this with my presence. And we'll just add a presence to this coastal land. Yeah, I think that's sensible. Uh, we also gain a power. Uh, is it major? What would we drop? We could drop... Encompassing Ward, which I think is good, but probably not as good as having a major power, especially given that I'm increasingly able to cast a major power. Our major power uh, plays are going to be pretty infrequent, but let's go ahead and gain one. 
This is something I would like to have access to. It would be really cool if it had a purple and a blue symbol on it. And was cheap? Okay. That says flow like water right on it. Speed. Uh, fast. Targets any spirit. Target spirit gets two range with all the powers. And may push one of their presents to an adjacent land. Bringing up to two explorers, two towns, and two Dahan along with it. And then if you have two purple, two blue, which we often will. The moved presence may also bring along up to two cities. And up to two blight. That seems extraordinary for us. We'll be able to move pretty much anything, pretty much anywhere we want. It cast on, uh, f cast on Ocean's Hungry Grasp. It'll give us range enough to hit almost every land. And cast on Fangs. We'll be able to move stuff from anywhere on the island. This seems extremely good. Uh, target Spirit adds two presents and one. Oh, wow. The ability to just add a ton of presents to a land seems very good. We'll never activate this. Add a beast, then per beast, two fear and three damage, and also per blight, one damage. Targets lands that we don't have trouble targeting. It's kind of expensive. I mean, like, for a lot of, uh, for a lot of spirits, I think this is bananas. For Ocean's Hungry Grasp, it's not that impressive. Because we can, it, it gives us one reach out of our coastal lands, but we have to target wetlands and coastal like i don't think this is it and this is two fear add a beast gather up to one beast do a damage per beast push up to two beasts it has bad symbols but it's a good card it's a shame we didn't draw this with uh with sharp fangs this would be really good for him it does let us put more beasts on the table it, it gives us the ability to manipulate beasts using energy from ocean's hungry fangs or ocean's hungry uh grasp I have a hard time imagining it's wrong to take this, though. And we must forget a power, as always. I'm gaining a major power, and I think it is going to be... Encompassing Ward. Defend 2 is a lot better against not Sweden. And Defend 2, like, if, it, if it's just a town and an explorer... They get past Defend 2 to deal Blight. I'm going to forget this. Maybe that's foolish. But this seems like a very good card. Okay. Now the card playing. So I'm pretty sure we have to play Instruments of Their Own Ruin or Very Bad Things. Ruin. Sorry, we get Energy Income. Then we have to play cards. You actually get one. And then I think we have to play this or some real bad stuff's going to happen, and that means we don't get to play any additional cards. Because uh, all of our cards cost stuff. Yeah, his energy is only exchanged with him. And uh, Tidal Boon gives two energy, but it, you know, it processes after the card playing phase, obviously, so that's not going to help us here. So that was easy. Uh, you. So we have Jungle Ravage. Target Spirit gets plus two range with all powers. They push one of their presents to an adjacent land. Man, I wish I had known. I should have grabbed powers before deciding on my push target. Because I should have pushed this presence out to here. Because then we could grab all that stuff. Yeah, push all of their presents to an or push one of their presents to an adjacent land. Bringing the explorers and the town over to here. Or the explorer and both of the towns over to here. But I guess it wouldn't make a huge difference because the city's still going to... No, it does make a difference, right? Because it makes this five damage instead of more than six. But we also have Grasping Tide. So how much damage is this right now? This is 6, 11, 12. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty bad. On oh, the move, the move presence may also bring along, like, we could definitely, like, right, these could be our plays. We can actually afford that. And that gets me... 
uh, town destruction and the, the bottom half of this, which allows us to run everything from this. I'm pretty sure you're allowed to take these in whatever order you want. You know what? Let's say we did a better job. Let's say I was a little bit smarter than I was, and I waited until I saw my powers before I did the push. Okay. So that is all three of our energy, but of course we have a supply in case we ever need to break into it. So we're not going to get too terribly ravaged. We are going to get ravaged. It is going to hurt. But maybe we'll get lucky. Maybe we'll get a lucky event or something. We have a fear card. That could be lucky too. Okay, let's do it. Uh, fast. So, first of all... This thing. We add a strife to the, ta the city. And then each invader with a strife token deals damage to other invaders in the target land. So I'm going to have the town deal two damage to the city. Then I'm going to have the city deal two damage to the town and one damage to the explorer. So there's some version of this, right, where it, there's there are cards in the deck that will cause the beast token to deal a damage and kill the city. Could happen. Uh, also, fear, because the city was destroyed, or the uh, town was destroyed, rather. Pretty happy about that. And then, also fast, I'm going to... Let's process this one first. So target spirit, which is me, gains plus two range with all powers, and then may push one of their presence to an adjacent land, bringing up to two... Explorers, towns, Dahan, cities, and blight with it. So I'm going to push this presence to here, and I'm going to take everything in the place with me. Do I want to take the Dahan? Maybe I don't. Hold on. Let's have a look. Because this thing... Where is it? This thing destroys Dahan. But it destroys one Dahan, and there already was one Dahan. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine with bringing them both. Let's just, let's just make this land dense with people. And that's all that does. Seems very good, though. And then... Uh, we do not have three gray, so destroy an explorer in a place where you have presence. I don't know, maybe here. Seems okay to me. Yeah. Okay. Pretty good. Uh, we don't have this. We do have this, actually. Yeah, thanks to the moon symbol there, so that's a fear. I wonder if I've forgotten that power any uh, during the during the game. I might have. I may very well may have. All right, and that's all my fast powers. So now we enter this phase of the thing. We are still on the healthy island for the rest of the turn. Towns and cities have plus one health. How terrible! Then each uh, beast destroys an explorer. How many places do we have where that's relevant? That was in fact the <laughs> the only one. Then, on each board, add a Dahan to a coastal land that has Dahan. Well, I think here seems good. We're just going to fight all these dudes. And then on this board, there are no coastal lands with Dahan. Man, that tight-knit communities thing is a real bummer. All right, show me a card. Each player adds a Strife in a land with Dahan. Ooh, that's cool. So, here we'll Strife up this city. Will I? I'm thinking since we could target this to drown a city. Yeah, let's strife up the city. I think that's fine. Uh, yeah, each player adds a strife in a land with Tahan. I think the other one should go here, probably. This is the only other place where there's Dahan and also invaders. And I could add another strife token over here, maybe. Actually, since we know there's going to be a build, that's probably right. Let's do that. Okay, and then... We have to process the actual invasion. So, first, jungle ravage. Damage is prevented here. 
Uh, no Ravage. Here, the town does three damage. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. Okay, so the town does three damage. That causes Blight, which, first of all, destroys this presence. Secondly, uh, triggers Mining Rush. So add a town to an adjacent land without towns or cities. We're going to have a build in the wetlands, so we should not shoot. This is the only place we can put it. So this build still does happen, and actually it's worse now. Man, stupid mining rush. Uh, and then... That was the last Blight off the Healthy Islands card. So we flip it over. It is now Blighted. Immediately, on each board, destroy one beast and add a Blight to a land with... Oh, man. Okay, so the first thing we do is we add five Blight per player to the card. The good news is, that's a lot, right? We're going to have to stack this to some degree. Okay. Eight Blight. we got to add on each board, destroy a beast, and then add a Blight. And it's coming from the cards. That's why I left two out of the stacks. So on each board, destroy a beast, add a Blight to a land that has dudes. Uh, to buildings, rather. So on this board, I think destroying this beast, maybe, is this is the least relevant beast. Or actually, probably, this guy is not in a great place as far as, like, actually communicating with the rest of the board. But he is able to carry our uh, our presence around. And I want to leave these guys in place because they're going to have to run around and do murders. And then we must add a blight to a land that has some buildings. I mean, here maybe? This might be the best spot to do it. And then on this board, we have to destroy a beast. I think this guy, again, is the least relevant. And then we must add a blight to a place that has buildings. I'll add it here since this place is not currently... Actually, it is totally going to build a city and then be a real problem. This place hasn't had its... Ravage yet, either. So we don't want to add it there. Yeah, okay. Okay, I guess I'll add it here. Adding it here, though, um... Adding a Blight to a place with Presence kills the Presence. There's no good option on this board. Alright, well, I think this is the least bad of the options. It's bad, though. Things are getting out of control. Okay, now, Ravage. This spot also blights. And a presence is destroyed. <sighs> yeah, getting real bad. Getting real bad. Then, uh, Wetland Build. So, City. 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 This is going to be very exciting. And then we are exploring the desert. So here, there are not enough explorers to turn any of the Dahan. And the same is true here. We have no control over the invader buildings, unfortunately. They're just everywhere. And the stage three cards are about to start up, and we are in bad shape. Oh, sorry. So hold on. We still have our slow phase. We don't have any slow powers from you. And from you, we do have Ocean Breaks the Shore, but just the small version. So we get to drown a town somewhere. Probably here. Could be here? Probably here. I guess if we drown this town, we know that this region won't take six damage. Honestly, there's value to that. <sighs> Trying to think here. Is there a way that we can get this region down to low enough damage? We could gather these two dudes into the ocean on our next turn, right? If we remove a town, then this place still has 11 damage coming through.
We could defend four to get it down to seven. We could bring it down to four if we do a gather the dudes, right? A, a beast gathering. Because we can kill one of the towns. So yeah, I think we actually do, we do it here. We'll drown this, causing a fear. I don't know. Seems bad. Seems like we're in a bad place and we may lose very soon. Alright, so a lot of my focus is on preventing this Ravage from killing us, but we actually do have two other Ravages over here that are totally out of control. Yeah. We're going to have to get a little bit lucky. I've not played well enough to handle it. Okay, so it is now the end of the turn. Let's do this. Hey, get in the stack. Feels pretty bad. So... We're going to play two cards that have a total cost of one. And we have one income. So we don't have to worry about our energy at all. We could do this thing. Take ourselves up to two, or up to three plays, get the one energy from this, and use that to play all three of these cards. And the next turn do a reclaim and stuff. That might be a good idea. Let's, uh, let's say that that's what we're going to do. So we're going to add a presence in any ocean. Just add a presence in both oceans. We'll gain an energy. And then for your growth, I'm pretty sure I have to do Ranging Hunt this turn. I think it's very important. So, uh, if I take the plant option, right, if we pull this presence, then I need to play two red cards and a green card. So I don't necessarily have to try to... Uh, like if I take the play, if I take the uh, the presence option, I can't reclaim. I don't have any energy. But we could do this and then three energy, and we get there. And in fact, for the first time, we'll get to do frenzied assault, assuming we don't lose before the slow phase. And prey on the builders might be really relevant this turn, actually. Right? It's desert builds. Uh, not really relevant. But we could like. You have to gather beasts to a place where you have presence. We could we could prevent a build, but we won't be able to prevent a build in a place that doesn't already have buildings. Let's uh, let's make that the play though. So I'm gonna I'm gonna take three energy, and we're going to add a presence to a jungle, to a place with beasts or a jungle. Here maybe. I kind of hate that we lost some of our beasts last turn. It feels pretty bad. Okay, and then we will uh, progress to the playing phase. So, in comes... I'm just going to play all three of my cards. Because I can and I need to, I'm pretty sure. So that puts us on four red, a white, an orange, two green. So we get... All of Ranging Hunt and the first line of Frenzy to Salt, probably. It's also going to cost us this many uh, power. Energy? Energy. Then over here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to play my whole hand. Call of the Deeps is relevant. Grasping Tide is relevant. Tidal Boon uh, probably will be relevant, because we're probably going to have to give two energy to Sharp Face over here, just so that he can do stuff next turn. But I think there's like a real chance I lose the game this turn. We, you know, we, we always knew it could come to this. So, fast powers. First things first. Uh, ranging hunt, I think. So, I'm going to target this space. I can gather a beast. Oh, no, that's right. I have to gather a beast, not two beasts. Yeah. So, we actually can't kill enough towns, but we, we could get lucky still. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to target here. We can gather a beast. He is going to... He's going to bring the disc with him? Is he going to bring... He's not. Because I think there's a good chance we blight here and I don't want to lose the presence. And there's no reason to bring it in. So then we do one damage per beast. 
And I think what we actually want to do is damage one of the towns once. I'm This is like a crazy Hail Mary, right, for anything good to happen here. So let's, uh... Let's hope. And then I can push up to two beasts. I don't want to, though. I want to leave the beast here. I guess, given that I can only do one damage, maybe I'd be better off targeting this space? Yeah, I'm going to do that. Let's target this space. We'll bring this guy in here. We'll kill that uh, that explorer. We will bring a presence. And then I can push. And I will push, and he will carry the presence. So we'll get our presence out onto the board a little bit more. Like, this is... This is horrible. This is a horrible mess. And then we have slow phase stuff. Oh, we have this. Prey on the builders. So I'm going to target here. I may gather a beast token. You know what? I will. It's a shame ranging hunt. Can't target lands that are blighted. Because this would have been a good target for it. And then, um... Target land. Invaders do not build here. So I'm going to drop a token over here just so we remember that. And then we have a couple of fast powers on this side. Um, Grasping Tide is defend four. You know, if we got one of those cards that was like defend two for each to Han, or like this, this could still work out in our favor. And we generate two fear by doing that. So we are going to get a fear card. We are going to get the thing, right? Because then I am going to... Oh, we're not going to get it right now. But we will get it this turn. We'll get another fear card. Yep, so then we're going to gather two dudes into the ocean. Take these guys and add them to the pile of drowned. Because we're the good guys in this story. Doesn't that sound like a thing the good guys would do? Oh, and then we get, yeah, we get pound chips to splinters. So we are on a single purple, but we have two white and three blue. So two fear, in fact. I wasn't even thinking about that, but okay, so the fear pool fills and then flushes, and then we end up at one fear in the pool. Okay, so we do get a fear card this turn. We can still do this. The terror level is now two. All we have to do to win is take all the buildings off the board. Should be easy. Oh, you're back at full health now. And that's all my fast powers, right? Got this, got this, got this. Yep. So, event time. All right, the first one of these that we've had to do on the Bladed Island. Each spirit chooses independently to destroy two of their presence or forget two of their powers or take a Blight from the Blight card and remove it from the game. Those options are all horrifying. Well, Orange... I was going to say Orange definitely can't afford to remove two presence, but actually... Orange is definitely removing two presence. And then we could probably afford to lose a Blight... I don't think we want to destroy Black's presence. Actually, Black has enough presence on Yeah. We'll destroy two of Black's presence, too. Then, on each board, add a disease to the sands or mountains with the most buildings. That's pretty good. Apparently, I somehow pulled a card out of the middle of that stack. So, the it's sands or mountains with the most stuff. So here, and here. This land does not have enough things in it. So those are pretty good, actually. Those prevent those prevent meaningful builds. And then, each spirit with at least two Dahan among all its lands gains an energy. That is not the Dahan effect I was looking for. And it doesn't even work for orange, but black does get it. So black gets an energy. Bummer, man. That could, that could have been a really good time for the Dahan to, you know, defend themselves. All right, let's see what this card does. Each player may replace one town with a with an explorer in a coastal land. Okay. So if we do that here, it'll bring us, <laughs> it'll bring us down to nine damage. Four of which is defended. It actually won't kill all the Dahan anymore. Right, because this removes two damage. Yeah, we definitely do it here. We still might lose, but we're getting closer and closer all the time to not losing. Each player may replace a town with a guy. So if we replace this town with a guy, the total damage amount would be 7. 
We defend four is still three. Man, it's still going to be a blight. If we... If we do it anywhere else, does it have any effect? No. It would make the amount of damage still six here. It'll still be six here. This is the only place where it can matter. That's a city. Ah, uh, it won't reduce the damage here. Well, none of the deserts are coastal, so breaking dudes down there doesn't matter. Just replacing this town with a guy will at least allow us to um, clear this more easily. It's true here as well. I don't think it matters. Or at least there's no way to know where it will matter because what uh, it's going to depend on factors that we don't know yet. So we're still going to get six damage here. We already have six damage here. Oh man, we're so close to this being right. Alright, I'm going to replace this one. It could matter. I don't think it does. Right, because we're not going to have presence here anymore. So we can't... We can't drown a... Actually, we're not going to have presence... We're not going to get to do Ocean Breaks the Shore. Because the Blight is going to destroy our presence. Yeah, we really needed we really needed an event that helped us out with this. Or a fear card that helped us out a little bit more. Okay, well that's that, so now we Ravage. Okay, here... The town does no damage, and then six damage is dealt. So a Blight occurs... Then... Because of heavy mining, a second blight occurs. The first blight causes a blight cascade, which we will cascade out into this land to avoid further cascading. And then, because we ravaged and dealt at least one blight, we also add a town to an adjacent land that doesn't have a town or a city. So, here. Then... We ravage this land, where we do a blight. It's six damage, so we do a second blight. Uh, Black's presence is destroyed here. There's two blight left on the blight card, and the rest of it... Oh no, we only deal one blight here though, right? There's no ravage in this spot, and then in this spot, the explorers deal a total... Or the invaders deal a total of six damage. Four of which is defended, so they only deal two damage, which only places one blight. Oh, I forgot, um, I forgot Mining Rush. We have to add a town adjacent to this place, to a space that doesn't have a building in it. Um, there's going to be a Ravage in Deserts next turn, so we'll add it here. And then, uh, here we add a blight, so we have to add a town. I'll add it here. I think this is the place where it would be easiest to deal with. And because they deal two damage, they kill one of the Don. But then these two get to fight back. We can kill a city and an explorer. I think that's probably the smart thing to do. So that generates two fear. And these strife tokens are removed. There was some version of this, right, where I build up strife tokens and then I instruments of their own ruin and cause all of them to wipe each other out. I couldn't quite figure it out. The problem was energy. I didn't have enough. Um, I didn't have enough energy to reclaim, pay the one, and then still end up at four. And if I had played Tidal Boom last turn, so that Sharp Fangs had two extra energy this turn, that could have done it. Yeah, I definitely screwed up somewhere. Okay, so that's just the Ravage step. <laughs> now we build. So, uh, there is no building here or here. The disease prevents it. There is a build here, and now that this place has a town, the build is a city. Great. And then we explore to jungles and mountains. Uh, there is no explore to this mountain. The wilds token prevents it. 
Uh, jungle. Jungle. There's no explore to this mountain either. Pretty bad. Overall, pretty bad. <laughs> and so we have until the ravage phase of next turn. Oh, this was invaders don't build here. Invaders not building there means that the uh, the disease token does not get expended. Okay, that's pretty irrelevant, I think. So yeah, we have until this Ravage Phase to figure out how we remove all of this damage. Obviously here, if we can generate uh, this, we have enough beasts to clear this tile. There, there won't be a Ravage here, so we did a good job with this. We gotta figure out how to prevent a lot of damage in these two places, neither of which are coastal, unfortunately. Oh wait, hold on. I have some slow powers yet. I was saying all that stuff because it was relevant because of the decisions we're about to have to make about slow powers. Also, uh, this presence got destroyed by the blight. So first of all, uh, Ocean Breaks Ashore doesn't do anything because we can't um, we can't zero range a power off of him. There's no uh, there's nothing left. But he does get tidal boom. Target spirit gains two energy, can push a town and up to two Dahan from one of their lands. Ah, we're not in any of the lands we need to be in. So actually, this is just plus two energy. I think we want to target it on Sharp Fangs. I think he needs the two energy pretty badly. Have to Hunter push to your ocean. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I. I don't think I have a better play. And I don't think I want to push a town... Well, I guess... We can push this town out of this jungle. And that'll mean the build next turn. Yeah, let's do that. We'll push the town over to here. Because that'll mean the build next turn doesn't introduce a city to this tile. Okay. Then we have our slow powers over here. So the first thing we have is... This is going to allow us to do... One... Fear and two damage in a place that has a beast. Here, probably? Yeah, it just has to target a place with a beast. I'm just thinking that we don't need it here. Right, this is under control. And we don't have any other place where it is relevant. We could do it here. This actually is, yeah. Right? Hard to know. I'm going to say, let's do it this way. This doesn't destroy a town, which feels kind of bad. And then we have to remove a beast token in that place. But it will prevent a build. We know that it will be relevant. Also, a fear. And then we have... Remove a blight or push up to three to Han from a place within one range of my presence where there is a Dahan. So we can target this. We can remove a we can remove a blight. But removing a blight doesn't actually do anything, right? Because um, if either of these if either of these tiles blight, they place at least two from the cascade. So actually, what I should do is push the Dahan into this territory. Because I think we're going to be somewhat reliant on the invaders kind of screwing themselves here. It would be really cool if we could play instruments of their own ruin, but I don't think we can. Because we'd have to reclaim and then we'd have to I was going to say we'd have to place a presence, but that's actually not true. If we were able to play Instruments of Their Own Ruin and also Ranging Hunt, we could target Ranging Hunt here. At the end of it, push a beast. Right? Push up to two beasts. At the end of it, push a beast to here. Have him carry our presence. Then this is our sacred site, which will allow us to target Instruments of Their Own Ruin here. 
We can strife the city, the city kills the other two, and then it doesn't ravage during the strife. Yeah, but that doesn't deal with this. This one, we're just going to have to get, we have to get one of those cards that like does a defense for each Dahan or something. I'm not sure we have any options on this one, but we can make this, we can make this happen. If we got defend two for each Dahan here, would it even be enough? This is eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah, it would be eight. It would be defend eight. I think we're in a place where that's the that's got to be the plan. So, is it possible though? I have to do a reclaim and plus three energy, right? Reclaim takes us down to two, then plus three energy, and my income takes us up to six because I need to play. Well, I need to play a green and red card. I actually have a free green and red card. Yeah, so let's push these two to Han to I guess we don't have to. Oh, you know what? I can um I can target this space. I can push this to Han somewhere. I don't Does it matter? No, it doesn't. It actually extremely doesn't. This card's not really doing anything except activating stuff for me. We could just rem we could remove a blight. Let's remove a blight. I'm gonna pull a blight from a jungle or mountain. This one. If we keep things under control and we don't blight out next turn, we'll be happy we remove this. It's just that this doesn't do anything toward helping us next turn. So this is under control already. This is under control already. It's just a matter of what what can we do over here. So also. In a place where I have presence, push two explorers or towns or Dahan. Push another per beast. Push another two per beast in the land. And if you pushed any to, uh, invaders, generate two fear. We actually probably can get a fear card off, huh? Okay. So, in a land where I have presence, I get to push stuff. I don't want to push this stuff. I could push you. There's nothing here. But I can push this card. I can push this guy over to the coast. And then doing that will allow me to get to fear. And we can, you know, work on this guy with our presence later. So that puts us only two fear off of another card. I don't know. We're, you know, we're, we're close to being screwed, but we're not yet screwed. So that's all of our powers. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So we know this guy has to play. Get all your cards back. He also gets to gain a card, which I guess will be a minor. We certainly couldn't afford to play a major this turn. So inflame the fires of life. Allows us to add a disease token or a blight or a strife token. That's pretty cool. And actually, we'll have three red all the time. So this is this is a very powerful card. Target spirit gathers a Dahan into one of their lands, then one damage in that land per Dahan present. That's also very good. And these both have green and red on them. Destroy. Okay, this card's cool, but it only targets non-bladed lands, and those are not where we're having the majority of our problems right now. And I think this one's right out. This is just not powerful enough. I'm going to have a hard time not taking add a disease and a strife. Right? I, it's got to be right. What a good card. And then we know we have to play instruments of their own ruin plus other cards this turn. So I think it's pretty obvious that gain three energy is our other call. Then over here, you also have to reclaim. So we will reclaim and gain a power. Gather a presence into each ocean is not even relevant. I think I don't have any presence not in the ocean, right? Yeah. And then gain a power card and also two energy. 
This guy could afford to gain a major, actually. Is there a card that I'd be willing to forget? Uh, Call of the Deeps is still pretty relevant. These are all kind of still very good. Maybe I need another miner. Just more options. So it would be cool to play a major, like a really powerful major. And I might have to. I'm gonna take a major, because I think we're in a we're like pretty back against the wall here. Okay, that looks pretty crazy. Unlock the gates of deepest power. Oh yeah, it's that card that has Galactus on it. Target Spirit gains a major power by drawing two and keeping one without having to forget another power card. And if you can generate every symbol outside of this, you may now play it by paying half its cost or by forgetting it at the end of the turn and it gains all thresholds. This is kind of nuts. Um, grant Re Hatred a Ravenous Form for each Strife and Blight in target land. Fear and two damage. If this destroys all invaders in the land, add a beast. If you have four white and two orange, add strife in up to three adjacent lands. That's crazy. We have white cards. We do have another orange card, too. It would have to be four white, so we'd have to play three white cards. And we can't do that and also play an orange. So that, that part probably won't happen. Is the top half of this card good enough? It's very good, honestly. Maybe. Infinite Vitality. The Han F plus four health while in target land is incredibly good. Uh, whenever Blight would be added to it, instead it is not added to it. And then add four gray. The Han ignore damage and destruction effects in the land that turn. And remove a Blight from it. Or adjacent. Wow. Infinite Vitality is really good. It also, like, four gray is a thing that could happen. Where one, one presence off of having a gray on the board and we have three card plays. Dahan having plus four health makes it so much easier to survive ravages. And finally, destroy all explorers is only works around sands. Sands where I have presence, which is actually impossible. Yeah, so never mind. Strangling Firevine is right out. I actually can't play that card. Well, I have to say both of these are really, really strong, in my opinion. Uh, this one's fast. It makes stuff not blight, and then we just kill them all. Yeah. Let's take infinite vitality. I'm not saying that the four uh, gray thing will ever happen, but it's something that could happen. So we probably don't want to drop a gray card. Honestly, call the deeps, probably. As much as it's nice to have a card that is white and purple for turning on stuff, um, I just don't. I think it's by far the least useful of our powers. Okay, so let's... Uh, got my two energy gathered. Yep, yeah, okay. Time to play cards. So we know this must get played or we lose, for sure. One. And then we also have to activate this. We are only a single green symbol off of doing that, though. So, which of our green cards do we play? We could, inc we could inflame the fires of life. We know that we will have a sacred site, but it will be here. Which is a little bit inconvenient. We could, we could inflame the fires of life here, though. And add a disease and a strife, so we'll prevent the build. No, we won't prevent the build, because this is a slow card. It'll be after the build. But we'll prevent, we'll prevent the city that gets built from attacking next turn we'll put up a strife that's probably right so that's another one and then we can play another card um actually we can only play two near the jungle so the other card we play has to be free but we'll play it it's good it's a good card and that does get us to four red, so we get Frenzied Assault. Again, provided we survive. And then, uh, you. You. Do you have anything that can affect this space? It is within one range of a coastal tile, but we don't have any presence. No. The answer is no. We do not have anything that can affect this. Can we make two fear? Actually, never mind. We're going to make... 
We're going to make fear from instruments of their own ruin. And actually from the hunt as well. So the fear is, the fear is well in hand. Although maybe we make more fear. How many cards? Uh, never mind. I was going to say maybe we could generate fear with the eye of getting to Terra level 3 soon. But no, we're not there. Infinite Vitality will be so powerful if we can ever get a, 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 a Sacred Site established up there. As it is, I think we're in a lot of trouble. So what if we go for... No, Steam Vents is zero range. We could Grasping Tide, but it won't matter. We could mostly do stuff that targets the other guy this turn. Actually, hold on a second. Flow like water, reach like air. So we could instruments of their own ruin. It has to be here. I'm just trying to think, like, is there any version of this? Oh, I can't use ranging hunt to target this space because it's blighted. Shoot, my whole plan is not any good. Uh-oh. I have to target this space because I have to establish the sacred site. Which means that these guys are actually still cool. Which is really bad. Is there any way for blue to deal with that? I could flow like water myself to get plus two range. And then I could grasping tide? This is six damage. Oh, Grasping Tide actually can explicitly only target coastal lands, no matter its range. We could get Steam Vents up to range 2. But I can't get 3 gray if I have to play Flow Like Water. I could use Flow Like Water to push one of my presents onto land, though. And then I could Steam Vents, like I could do something meaningful. I could drown some dudes. Drowning stuff from this tile actually is pretty good. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta, we gotta flow like water, reach like air. So that I can push one of my presents onto land. This land. Then, my other two card plays have to have gray in them. And it'd be cool if I could get a purple at the same time. What if those are my plays? That gives me a use of pound ships to splinters. Let's me ocean break the shore here after the city is built this turn. And then also swallow the land dwellers to finish off all the stuff in this jungle. I think that's right. So let's go take all of my energy that is on the table. And let's see if we can, uh, let's see if we can survive the turn. So first things first. Uh, innate powers, ranging hunt. We have to target this space. We gather a beast. He brings my presence with him. And then we push the beast. Because now we're reliant on... We're reliant on a very good event, unfortunately. Then we instruments of their own ruin. We add a strife to this tile. And then each invader with strife deals damage to other invaders in target land. Uh, so... The town goes down, we do a, a fear, and the explorer goes down. And then this city will deal no damage. Uh, oh, you know what? I think I screwed this up earlier because I didn't have them deal the appropriate amount of damage because of fine steel for tools and guns. Well, too late to fix it now, but I think I made an error there. An error that would have helped us if I had played it correctly. Okay, then over here... We can target this on, you know, whatever, coastal, and we get a we get a fear, so we get a fear card. And then the entire fear pool flushes back out, and if we don't get some pretty great cards here, we're just dead. You know, and if that's the way it goes, that's the way it goes. Like I said, I was pretty sure we were going to lose. So flow like water, reach like air. I guess I can, um, I can steam vents right now to destroy the town. 
It doesn't really matter if I do that or not. It doesn't matter. The order doesn't matter. Actually, I should see vents. It doesn't matter. Because the thing is, we're going to wipe this out no matter what. And then we're going to not have presence anywhere that we can... Yeah, okay. So I'll use Flow Like Water, Reach Like Air to push this presence one. Yeah, onto an adjacent land. Uh, and then we will Steam Vent and destroy this town. This is for later. We did this already. So now we move into Explorer phase and find out if we lose or not. First the event. Invaders immediately ravage in one terrain type not showing under any invader action. Spirits may prevent this ra ravage on any and all boards by destroying two presents from each board to be protected. From each board to be protected? Okay, so we ravage in a terrain type not shown, which is... None of them. They are currently... Oh no, this isn't actually in an invader space. So they ravage wetland. Um, if they ravage wetland, we do lose. So we have to prevent this. We have to remove two presents from each board to be protected. We can't, though. But this board only has one presence on it. And if... So we could produce, we could remove two presents here and still be okay, but I think we die, I think we die. I'm pretty sure I can't uh, choose to pay less than it's asking me to pay. Yeah. So, we, before any of the stuff we were hoping for can even happen, these two Ravages kill us, because they place way more than two Blight. And unfortunately, if there's ever no Blight here, players lose. That's a shame. Uh, and then we were going to get Canny Defense, defend one per Dahan, which is not enough here, and also doesn't prevent the Ravage here, so we were, yeah, we're mega dead. Out of curiosity, what was our fear card? Each town destroys a an, an explorer, each city destroys two explorers. Okay, not relevant. Explorers would have died. It would have been cool. It would have been a, a lot of dead explorers, but... We get ravaged out. Well, honestly, I held on longer than I thought I was going to. We were not anywhere near victory. But we were holding on. So the core of the issue here is that we just never... We never managed to get a space where there weren't buildings. Right? Like, we couldn't get any place clear. And so every time we explored, the maximum number of explorers was added to the board. You really have to get... Like, you have to clear out the corners, right? Like, if we could have gotten rid of... If we could have gotten it so there's no no buildings in these lands, it really cuts down on the number of explorers, you see. Anyway, that's going to be it for us for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, come back next time. I don't know when the next board game video will be, but not not too long. And I don't know what we'll be, what we'll be playing, but I bet it will be cool. Uh, if Spirit Island seems like your jam, you know, uh, it's available right now. I think a, a new printing just hit stores. So uh, you can go to Amazon and get it. And uh, we'll see you next time.